Hello and welcome back for another Torah Tuesday. I'm Dr. Carmen Imes, Associate Professor of Old Testament at Talbot School of Theology at Biola University. We're continuing our study of the Ten Commandments, and today we're in verse 15, Exodus 20, verse 15, you must not steal. This is a pretty straightforward command. It involves respect for others' property, which is the foundation of a society in which neighbors can trust each other. To steal is to fail to trust God's provision, to take what belongs to someone else and try to make it my own. The verb used for stealing here is ganav, which implies a kind of secrecy. This is not a, an open assault on someone, although that surely is also prohibited. This implies a secretly sneaking to take what belongs to someone else. If you want to see more detail on what kind of stealing the Bible considers problematic or, and or what the penalties are for stealing, you can check out chapter 22, verses 1 through 15, where a lot of different scenarios are presented, the stealing of animals, the misuse of borrowed property, etc. To ganav something, to steal something, can include kidnapping, and there are scholars who have suggested that this command really is about kidnapping. I don't think that is necessary to reduce it to kidnapping, but for sure, kidnapping is an especially serious form of stealing, which merits the death penalty. That's how serious it is. Property crimes do not merit the death penalty in the Bible because human life is considered more valuable than any object. But Stealing is considered serious enough to incur a significant penalty. So if you steal a sheep, you have to repay four sheep for, this, for the one that you stole. If you steal a larger animal like a cow or a bull, you have to replace it with five animals uh, of similar size. Now, this would include forms of embezzlement or misuse of business funds. And it's interesting to think about how the parameters or the possibilities for theft have changed over time. So one ancient version of this rule is about boundary stones. Now, normally uh, in the West, we put up fences between property. Uh, fences were not practical in ancient Israel because there was not a lot of wood to create them with. But stone walls or boundary stones were much more common. And so we see in Deuteronomy 19, verse 14, and again in 27, verse 17, that uh, boundary stones were considered immovable. You should not move a neighbor's boundary stone. That would be a way of encroaching upon their property, trying to enlarge your territory and shrink theirs. That would be a form of kind of embezzlement of land. Proverbs also circles back to this idea. Uh, Proverbs 22, 28 says not to move a boundary stone. And then in chapter 15, verse 25, it says, Yahweh tears down the house of the proud, but he sets the widow's boundary stones in place. A really uh, beautiful passage that talks about how Yahweh himself uh, takes on himself the protection of a widow. Similarly, in Proverbs 23, verses 10 and 11, it reads, Do not move an ancient boundary stone or encroach on the fields of the fatherless. For their defender is strong. He will take up their case against you. So God is basically saying, don't mess with society's most vulnerable people because I myself will defend them in court and you will be on the wrong side of justice. Uh, it, it might seem like taking from those who can't defend themselves is a sort of easy way to build your portfolio, but God, God takes special care of the vulnerable, and he takes aim at those who try to disrupt their lives or uh, take what belongs to them. Now, a modern version of stealing could be um, swiping images off the internet and using them without attribution. Or we have a, a, an explosion of AI tools, AI platforms that can create content for us. This is raising new questions about plagiarism when you pass off content as your own, but it was internet generated, AI generated, or came from someone else's website. 
to take what does not belong to you or to take credit for producing something that you did not produce is serious business. And this command tells us how seriously God takes it. Before you go today, one uh, quick announcement. Last week, Admirato released my second course with them. This is a course on Christians and Old Testament law. And best of all, this course is free. It's a couple of hours of teaching on how Christians can read and understand Old Testament law. So if you would like to dig in more deeply, you can check out Admirato at the link in the description below and uh, access the free course. Have a great week. Thank you.